Happy Pride, y'all. I've been attending Lesbian Tea Tech all week, and I just wanted to share with you what I would consider the highlights of what I learned in the past week. Uh, something that Tina Chen said, uh, she's the CEO of Time's Up, is where we are in this inflection point in U.S. history. In 1918, there was a global pandemic, the H1N1 virus, and there's 675,000 deaths total in the U.S. Right now, in just 100 days with COVID, the COVID pandemic, we've had 127,000 deaths in the U.S. alone. And also, the last economic crisis we saw was the 2008 Great Recession, and we were losing about 70 to 80,000 jobs a month in 2008. Compared to the last 100 days, we've lost 20 million jobs. So we are in a pandemic, we are in an economic crisis in the U.S., and last but not least, the Black Lives Matter movement and the death of George, the murder of George, George Floyd. And this is an unprecedented um, civil unrest that we're in. The last time we saw something like this was 1968 with the Civil Rights Movement, but Angela Davis and many other um, people who were activists in 1968 are saying that this is even greater in terms of the change that could potentially happen. So all of these crises, crises are all interconnected and related. And right now we are seeing how interconnected we truly are, that one of our pain is everyone's pain. It's all of our pain. And Moj Madara, CEO and founder of BeautyCon, she had a conversation with um, Bose, uh, St. John, um, CMO of Endeavor. And something that Moj said that really just resonated with me was that when we're sick, when we're isolated, which, you know, we're sick and isolated because of COVID, we're vulnerable and we're alone um, because of the economic crisis and the civil unrest. What do we do? We want to cry out for our mother. And it's a guttural, primitive cry, just like George Floyd's um, crying out for his mother when he was about to be killed. And something that Moj also says that we're returning to a matriarchy. We're seeing that the patriarchy doesn't work. We're seeing the cracks, the failures um, of the patriarchy and that it doesn't care for us and our humanity and our well-being. So we're returning to the matriarchy. We're returning to the nurturing, the feminine, the, I would say the divine feminine. And it's a time when we need to connect heart to heart more than ever. And I think that's why vulnerability and authenticity is resonating so much and why leaders like uh, Jacinda um, Ardern of New Zealand, the prime minister, and Tsai Ing-wen of the president of Taiwan, these female feminine leaders who are so empathetic and so authentic and vulnerable and genuine are succeeding so well in keeping their country safe um, from economic harm as well as the COVID crisis. Another thing that stood out to me this week was the conversation between U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren and the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, Alicia Garza. Um, something that Elizabeth Warren said is that this is a great reckoning that is happening right now in the United States. We're realizing that these aren't cracks in the system but they're actually traps for black and brown communities. So, you know, we can't just say it's a crack in the system. No, it was a very intentional trap that was created to specifically disadvantage and harm and even kill black and brown uh, folks. So, um, Alicia Garza put it this way, we are in a Rona rebellion and I'd like to call it, it's a great awakening. We are at an inflection point where everything can change if we are willing to step in. And how do we step in? Something that Glennon Doyle said, um, who's one of my personal favorite people in the world, um, she's the author of Untamed, is that we need to ask ourselves, what's performative work and what's transformative work? 
and we need to focus on the transformative work internally first to address the disparities before we can do the work external and the analogy she uses that it's like a glacier 80 percent of your work um, needs to be hidden underwater only the small little parts can be visible of what you're actually doing to 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 address racism especially if we are allies, um, we're going to get bumped in advocacy work. And if we're actually doing the work inside um, to change what's within us, you know, when our mug gets bumped, the right thing comes out of that mug because we've already done the internal work of changing what's inside of us. And so if we have racism inside of us, when we get bumped, racism's going to come out. If we've done the internal work of empathy and true allyship, true, that's what's going to spill out when we get bumped in the advocacy work. And right now, especially for our allies, we are required to have deep humility. And that's when the right energy is going to overflow into the movement that we are currently in. And we are not just in a moment, we are in a movement. So I would challenge all of us in closing that especially for us allies, for us to do deep listening and to follow um, black folks and let them lead. And we need to do the behind the scenes work before showing up. Um, so I would challenge all of us as my last message, please, all of us, let's do the work behind the scenes, the 80% of the glacier that's unseen before we show up. So thanks. And that's what I learned at LWT. Happy Pride.